welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do what my friend Lois likes to call a minimalist card. Very simple, clean, and um, just focuses on one little um, die cut or an image as your focal point and not busy. And what's even best is it's so simple to do. You don't need a lot of time. You don't need a lot of product. And it, you really come out with a very sophisticated look or a clean, simple, fun look. So what your final project will be is something like this, where you have a little bit of color in the background using a blending brush to give a little glow that your die cut can be um, adhered up to and you stamp your sentiment on there and voila you've got a beautiful looking card in a matter of minutes um, I'm going to show you lots of ways to do that you know me once I get started on a little um, on a project I just keep going with it and I just can't stop so I, I love showing you a lot of different options on how to do that same style of stamping so I have about eight cards to show you here and I promise I won't take too much of your time but please watch to the end and give me a thumbs up down below if you like it and um, don't forget to go over to stampwithlorraine.com when you're done if you are interested in buying some Stampin' Up! products you can also connect to my online store on my blog and I'd love to be your demonstrator if you don't already have one also you can uh, sign up with my newsletter there so I don't even have a name for this style of card, but basically, like I said, it's going to be a minimalist look that is a super easy card to make, especially if you want to make sets or you just need a quick card. So you're going to start with white base um, at eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter, and make sure you burnish your crease. We're going to have a layer of white that's a quarter inch smaller than that. So we're doing four by five and a quarter. And we're going to have some kind of um, focal point. I'm using a die cut white. So yes, white on white. So a lot of white for that clean look. Um, so this was die cut from the pen flowers which coordinates with the hand pen petals. Okay, they can be purchased as a bundle. Okay, they cut out the stamped image or just the um, cut out version here. So using that, we're just going to put a little pop of color on that. So I'm going to use my blending brushes. And my first one I did in blue, but this one we're going to do in a more lavender tone. So I'm actually going to use the Fresh Freesia, which is one of the new in colors. So that way I could show you a version in blue and a version in the Freesia. Okay, so with the blending brushes, just tap a little bit, tap a little bit on your pad. I like to test it on my paper here to make sure I don't have too much on there before I start making. I'm just going to call it sort of just like a little glow of color. See how it made a really kind of harsh look there? I don't want that. So I start off doing it lightly and then I'll push a little bit more to, to get that color on there. And you can always add, but you can't take it away. So it's just going to be just a little subtle a um, little splotch of color here that we're going to lay that flower over so that it stands out and it's going to pop. So I want a little bit more than that, I believe. You can make it as wide as you need for your focal point or as dark as you want. Let's play around with it. And I like how it just fades off. It's not a contained shape. So that's why I say just a little glow, like highlighting. I'm just going to highlight that. So I'm going to add a little bit more to extend here. Okay, maybe just a little more on the left. Okay. 
Okay. And then to glue that down, of course, you can run it through with your adhesive sheets as you're die cutting it. But I tend to die cut a bunch of these out just to have them on hand anyway. And then I do this um, trick with the glue. I take a sponge, which I keep the inside a little wet, a little wet paper towel, and I have a sponge with a binder clip on there, and I put a little glue on my silicone mat, and I'm going to dab the glue on the back. Some of these places are big enough for me to just dab glue like this, but on some of those teeny tiny places, it's not going to work. So that's why I like kind of doing this, because glue will not stick to the silicone mat, and it just rubs right off. So make sure you don't move this because otherwise you'll get glue on the front. And then we're just going to stick that down. Right like that. Oops, see my finger stuck to it and I didn't get it down quickly enough. I'm going to add a little bit more there. One thing with the, this all-purpose glue, it is a, it says all-purpose because if you get it down when it's wet, it's a permanent glue. If you let it dry and then stick it later, it's more of a temporary glue. So it makes it a little tacky, but then you can pick things up again. Okay, so we have just that nice little white on white with the glow of the color behind it to give it that little bring attention to that there and then we're just going to stamp our sentiment in black so that stands out and I'm using this thank you from sweet strawberries I'll show you that set a little bit later and then we're going to attach that to our card. We can um, either attach it straight on or pop it up with dimensional dots. I'm just going to glue it on for now just for saving a little bit of time because I have a lot of other things to show you. Okay, beautiful little quick simple card. Elegant, soft, and um, really quick and easy to make. All right, so, oops, I have a little piece there that I have to get down. Okay, so very nice. I'll show you, um, then if you wanted to, you can add any embellishments or you can just keep it simple like that. Since I have the Freesia, um, this is the In Color Jewels and the current in colors. I'll add just a couple of teeny tiny ones there. Okay, and then you have a nice, um, really elegant card and really quick to make. So just, you're creating like a little glow, a little shine there, and then putting your focal point over that. So here it is in blue without any additional bling. And there's the one in the in the freesia. So how nice of a nice little set that would make for somebody. A nice collection. I always like bringing cards as a little hostess gift when I'm going someplace. Okay, so keep those handy. And then the next one. I'm going to use the many layered blossoms dies, which coordinates with the um, Blossom, I think so, Blossom and Bloom stamp set. But I'm not going to use these big dies, obviously. I mean, you could and add a little glow of color behind them. Um, but I'm just going to use the small ones. And when you cut those out, they look like this. Some are very thin, and then some have a thicker look to them. So that's these dies here. And we're going to do this one in flamingo, flirty flamingo. Um, and guys, just to show you a way to store your stamping blends, I just have 
haven't covered it up yet, but yes, it's our cream <laughs> container, <laughs> but it's a perfect height. I love it. And I found that when I get my Stampin', um, my Stampin' Blend markers, okay, these are blending brushes. When I get my Stampin' Blend markers, I cut the bag and they make a nice little sleeve for going over there and protecting my brushes from dust or from dark colors smudging off on others. Um, so that's what, that's what I like to do there. So I'm going to take my pink one. I found these cute little clips online to show me at a glance which color it is. I just use this pink one for all my pinks and I have a yellow and a blue and a dark green and a light green brown and so forth. So you can just brush them off and most of the color will come off. You can run them underwater to clean them, which I haven't done yet, but they will need a little bit of time to dry. So I'm going to do a little, little glow of the pink on there, the Flurry Flamingo. Okay, nice and quick and easy. I'm going to make this one a little bit more ombre, a little darker on the bottom. And then spraying the color a little lighter up on top. Okay, so you get the idea on that. And then you can arrange your flowers however you like on that. And magic of the camera. Ta-da! All done there. <laughs> I stamped thanks so much from the Speed as a Peach. I love that font on there. It's it's a script, but it's very neat and nice and even. Um, so stamp that in the flamingo as well. This time I'm going to put a teeny tiny border of that flamingo behind my white. So I cut this down a quarter of an inch. So this top layer is now three and three quarters by five. Okay, and I wanted just a tiny bit of the flamingo to show. So this one is usually we cut it to five by four, um, five by three and a quarter, three and three quarters, but this one is actually five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. So just cutting it down. Um, so you have a teeny tiny border. I wanted this to stay as the focal point and not overwhelmed by having a big border of the color here. So just a teeny tiny amount. And also since I just have a teeny tiny amount, I didn't want to waste all this in the middle. So like I always suggest to you guys, punch something out on the inside. This I use the, it's called scallop contour size from the contour and color set. You get all these frames in here. So that's the one right there. So you have the scallop and you have the stitching. So I'll save that for another project. Why waste all that paper when you're just going to see an eighth of an inch all around there? Okay, so then get those glued together real quick. And let's we'll get the final results. And as you can see, I wanted that color piece to be small enough to give just a little bit of color around the top layer, but I also wanted a lot of a thicker edge of the white to show because I still wanted that clean white look. Okay, so there's another version right there. Quick and easy. Okay, using the Beauty of Friendship stamp set, I'm actually not going to use the stamp set, but I wanted to show you what coordinates with the dies. Okay, and these are the Beautiful Trees dies. I'm going to use this die here, which cuts out um, a very detailed tree without any leaves on it. So I wanted something just very um, simple. And we're going to cut that out in soft suede. I ran that through my die cut machine and that's what you get. For this one, I wanted a glow of yellow and oranges in the background. So you don't have to use just one. You could use two colors. And I thought maybe it would look a little bit like a sunset. So using my yellow blending brush. And let's start with some yellow on top. We'll put this one on the left this time. And 
and get my orangey one. Oh, pumpkin pie and bumblebee are the colors I'm using. I'm just going to blend those colors together. And have your die ready, your die cut ready, so that you can always measure and see what looks good or where you need more color, how dark you want it. Because the die cut is brown, I want this to show through a little bit more. But not overwhelm, okay, just to bring a little bit of a glow there. Okay, I think that looks great. So I'm going to close these guys up. And because I've been needing some sympathy cards, I thought this would work well. So I'm just, remember your brushes, just brush them off on your paper till they run clean. And when you need to, just clean them under water at some point. Okay, so again, using the glue in the sponge technique, I'm going to put a little bit of dots of glue here on the thicker pieces and then that will help spread the glue when I take the sponge to it as well. And the brown you could see where the glue is a little bit better too. And be careful pulling these delicate things off your fingers because it does get sticky. And you have to hold it down for a second. Okay, so that looks really nice. And I took from my many messages dies, um, thinking of you with sympathy and prayers. Pop that up with some dimensionals. The mini ones fit perfectly in this tiny sentiment. And that's going to go across there and then onto, onto the card. And this one, I might actually pop up with some dimensionals. Just because it is a little plain, it gives a, I don't know, just a little bit something else to it. And remember, don't waste the edges of your dimensionals. You can cut them and use them. I like to put three and three and then one or two in the middle so it doesn't sag. And then we'll put those up. If you can't grab the dimensional backs, stick your fingernail in there a little bit and the edge will pop up. Gives you something to grab a little bit more easily. A little trick, some people like to use um, a poker tool of some kind. I find just grabbing a flat edge they come off pretty easily. Just rolling my thumb over one of those flat edges. Oops, I bent that a little bit. Anyway. Okay, so that, that pops up there. Something else you can do is, instead of just leaving it plain, you can emboss it. This one I ran through the Tasteful Textile embossing folder to give a little texture. So I'll die cut another tree and then we'll see the difference of using that. So to add a little something else on there. So you can use colored die cuts and a blend of two colors on there. Okay, another way of adding the color in the background is to use some of these decorative masks. And in the new mini catalog, there are some new masks to look at. These are in the regular catalog. They're called basic patterns. I'll show you two cards. One I used the dots, and the other I used, um, okay, this um, more intricate design here. And you could probably see those against the white. And there's also this little, sort of like this flower bud and there's also a tree so you can um, you get four in the package 
and so I'll show you quickly how to do that. So I'm going to use soft succulents. And because I'm only doing a section of it, I can arrange it so I can hold both the mask and the paper. If you were doing the whole thing, you would probably use some washi tape. Look, there I did it on the back. You can um, use some washi tape and tape this down. They'll stay together so it doesn't move. So anyway, kind of like what you saw that sneak peek on the back. I'll show you how I got that. Just going to dab off. If I get too much on there, start small, start easy. And I'm going to just go across lightly. You can always peek underneath and see how it's looking. And again, I want that faded look. So I'm going to do heavier in some sections and lighter in some other sections. All right. So there we go. And this is what I did the other night. So I'm just going to stick with that. And again, using a little bit of color this time, same measurements as before. We're going to have just that little edge. And this time I cut my focal point out of what's underneath. So you don't have to waste any extra cardstock on that. I'm going to glue this down. So basically, if you put this all together, you're using no more than one sheet of cardstock, right? Because this is half, this is about a quarter, this is about a quarter. Your focal point comes from that. So simple and not gonna cost you a lot either. Okay, I'm gonna put that down on top there. So basically you can make this little background um, glow. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> this little section of color that's going to highlight your um, focal point there. All right. So I should have stamped on there first, right? Before gluing it down. But I was just getting so excited to see the final, the final result here. Okay. So I'll be real careful. I'm going to stamp hello from the set that's called Biggest Wish. Absolutely love this one my favorites go to all the time. I'm going to stamp hello down here. Luckily this one is pretty foolproof that stamp and then we would glue that down there. Now this one I I can just dab with glue. Okay here we go and oh I see a little smudge down there. Maybe I'll bring this down. Okay change of plan. That looks good too, right? All right, a little smudge of black there. How to hide it. Happens to everybody. But there you go. I still think that looks pretty. So here's another one that I did with the other mask in Misty Moonlight. And this is doesn't have a focal point that's an image, just my label and my sentiment. Wrapped a little bit of silver uh, twine in there. And I see a piece is trying to get loose. I'm just going to stuff that back in there. I attached this up with dimensionals and caught my um, gold uh, silver cording in there. Now this one is just one card layer, not even two. So how simple you can do with that. And I just love how this shines through there and this kind of fades into the background. So both with the stencils. And this was the uh, Forever Flourishing die that goes with Forever Ferns. And so here's the Forever Fern set that coordinates with those dies. And on this one, I'm going to use another one of my many messages. This one, as you remember, is one big stamp. You have one big die that cuts out all of those sentiments. And then I keep them in a little bin and I rifle through them whenever I need something. And it's perfect. So I just love having that at my beck and call. These are great if you want something big. can take up a lot of space on your card. If you want to have something more subdued, this is the way to go. So these two are my, a lot of my go-tos. Okay, so instead of stenciling or just using your blending brush, I used just this little splatter and just did my little 
some stamping full strength and sometimes stamping off to get this little area of color, which is going to be the background to um, these here that are also from the Forever Flourishing dies. And this one is easy to put some glue on as well. So whatever you can find to make just this little highlight of color will work. And the rest of it is a very neat and clean card. I had these in my stamp case with that particular stamp set. So when I cut out something, I cut out this from one of my other dies and I had this piece left over. So I just shoved it in a little cello bag and to use for another time. So it was there, just all set to go. Again, this is from the many wishes and put some dimensional dots on the back. And I had all these things just ready. All I had to do was stamp that little splatter in the back. I also keep my card, a set of card bases in white and vanilla and a set of the um, top layer as well. I'm just gonna put this across the bottom and going to pop that um, with dimensionals. But I won't take the time to do that now. I'll show you that at the end. This one, we usually do a quarter inch difference. This one I did a half an inch difference, just again for it to, um, since it's white on white, you can see that edging a little bit better. I just wanted that to be drawn in a little bit more. So that could be a nice masculine card or just encouragement for somebody for any reason. This one I couldn't wait to play with, and it's the sweet strawberry set. Comes with a coordinating punch. They call it the strawberry builder because you have parts of the strawberry, the flowers, the leaf, and the little stem on the top. You put those pieces together and you can build your strawberry. Now, you can stamp each of these separately and, well, you're going to stamp them separately, but you can do one and then feed it in to punch just the strawberry out if you're on a small piece of paper or the flower and all that. Or there's several tricks to um, stamping in a way that you can punch them all out at the same time. So what I did was I punched this out of plain paper and I layered it on another piece of white paper and then I stamped my leaf right in there. This is a two-step stamp, has your background and your um, design of the veins of the leaf. I stamped this right in there. Okay, it takes a little, a little eye to try to get in there and see. This might even be better if you do this in a darker color, maybe a black, because then you could see it a little bit as a contrast to what you're stamping onto. So next time I would do that in a darker color. Your strawberries, you have your background, and you have your filler with your little seeds and an outline. So I did my outline in Smoky Slate. And I did the strawberry, of course, in Real Red. I did the greenery in Garden Green. Makes sense. And I did the little flower, which are typically white flowers, but I did it in Daffodil Delight, just so that obviously you need to see um, a little edging. And it could have a little bit of a yellowish tint to it, maybe the way the sun hits it, whatever. So those are the colors used there. And then once they're all stamped on there, then you can just line it up and punch them all out at the same time. So I have my white layer that I used Daffodil Delight with my blending brush and just created that little glow. Reminds me of the sunshine ripening the strawberries. I put together my strawberry pieces and decided what I wanted to glue straight down and what I wanted to pop up with dimensionals and have a little flower there as well. So that's going to go down there. And then we're going to put a little sentiment right over here. So I'm going to stamp that happy birthday. That came from the sweet strawberries set. You have a lot of nice sentiments on there and that um, casual script. Happy birthday, you sweet thing. I'm going to go right there. So I'm doing that in Smoky Slate, the same as my background. I 
I got a little bit on there, so I'm going to be careful not to lean onto that corner. Okay, ta -da. and then I will put that onto my card face. I think I'll stick this on first and then add the strawberries after. Oh, there's my first goof up. Always turn it over if you don't like it. And nobody will see, so don't tell anybody. Okay, these were just put together and I'm going to glue this one straight down. These I have dimensionals on the back. Pop it up a little bit. Sweet Strawberry Set is kind of what they call distinctive, where you have a lot of different shading within one stamp. Okay, it almost looks like it wasn't inked up all the way, but that's on purpose to create um, some light and shading so it looks more three-dimensional. I'll bring this down here and I'll add a little flower. Okay, here we go. Very cute, right? Just that little border around really helps frame um, your focal point there. Okay, so I'm going to do another one with the little puffins. And because this has a, a very solid area here that really has to be inked up well, and it's in black, and if there's any variation of the color, it might not look so hot. I practiced some stamping here and on my scrap paper. Always good to do first. And I wasn't too happy with the splotchy look there. Maybe it's just because I had just inked up my memento pad and it needs a little time to steep in. But anyway, I figure I'm going to use my Stamparatus. Now this is one tool that I really can't live without. <laughs> I just love it. For this reason, to make sure I get a nice solid stamp, to line up things, of course, to do assembly line stamping where you have to do a lot of one thing at one time. It's nice that you don't have to grip your your block and push it every time just put it on here um, and use your um, little hinge plate here to do your stamping so because I'm going to cut this out it doesn't really matter where I put it on here it's actually a piece of scrap paper the back has something on it that I didn't like so I'm going to just stick it there push my plate over it it clings to there and then I can ink it up my magnets are holding down the paper. Be careful, the magnets are very, very strong. You do not want them to get too close to each other when they are not adhered, adhered to the board because they will attract and when they hit each other, they can break. It's not um, a flaw with the Stampin' Up! product. It's just how magnets in general are. So I'm gonna bring this over here and press it down and because I want a little bit darker image there. I don't want that little splotchy look. I'm going to ink it up again because this hasn't moved. It's going to stay in the exact same space. You could never get that if you're just trying to hand stamp it. And you could do this as many times as you liked until you get the coverage that you want. See, isn't that so much better? I love it. Okay, um, a friend of mine asked, I said, oh, what do we think about this temperatus? Is it worth it? I was like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Some things you just have to have, and this is one of them. Okay, so now I'm just going to fussy cut this out with my paper snips. And there is no die for this. So I'm just gonna cut it out different ways to fussy cut. You can leave a little tiny bit of a border all the way around. That way you're not messing with the integrity of the line. If you cut right on the line, you might cut a little too much. It's always good to just hold your scissors straight and move your paper around. I always think of it as kind of like I'm driving. Okay, 
Okay, so then let's take another card base. I have my white layer and I have a Misty Moonlight layer that I'm, again, I'm just going to have this teeny tiny border around because I don't want that to stand out too much. I want my little penguin guide to be the focal point. <music> going to use Make-A-Wish from the same set that the little puffin came from and I'm going to add a little candle down there too. I'm going to add some of these little guys. New Make-A-Wish. Ta-da! Okay so then we're going to put this all together. And I'm going to put this down here like this. These are actually retired in color embellishments. Um, we do have square ones in these same colors in the Misty Moonlight, Just Jade, Magenta Madness, Cinnamon Cider, and the bumblebee. So I'm just going to take a variety of these colors just to, because I want it to be fun, a little bit more kid-like. Take all the colors, actually. I might take another, mm, no, maybe another yellow, another bumblebee. Maybe there. Okay, just add like little confetti all around. Very cute, right? Okay, I like that. Well, I hope you liked all these ideas and they inspire you to make some of your own cards and uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it. So um, hope you come back soon and check out some other videos by Stamp with Lorraine and uh, check out my blog at stampwithlorraine.com.